like that. So we have that. So now all we have to do is go back to here and say save scenery GFX to ROM. Click that, find the one you wanted, right here it is, open. It'll tell you the recompressed size. Now a lot of times you might want, the best way to do it is to make the scenery GFX file in the beginning. Don't change it and save it back to the ROM. It'll tell you what the recompressed size is and then you'll know how much space you have to work with. If you go over that number then you know you're too high and you could possibly be overwriting stuff. If you're under the number then you're fine. So I don't know what it is right now because we didn't check it but this isn't going to be an important ROM anyway so it doesn't matter if I overwrote stuff but I shouldn't have because I took away a tile and then added one. I didn't just add a completely new tile. And the tile we made was really simple so it's not like it took a lot of space. So click OK and now you have to go back and if you notice your tiles are all going to look the same. Okay, let's scroll with this. Nothing's different. But that particular tile we changed, I believe, is this one. Yes. Now if you notice, here's our tile that we changed, but on here it's the same. The reason you have to do that is click save to ROM and it'll change all the tiles back to what they're going to be now. But now the other thing is, now that you've created this file right here, well, not there, that's your Cree file, but right here. Now you can go through and just piece together, change your palette up there too, um, what you want. So instead of us drawing those four different tiles, we could just use this tile over and over again and just rotate it. In other words, find that tile, right here it is, and just drag it onto this particular tile four different times. And then you just click this button to kind of rotate it. And there we go. Now we have our square tile. This is what our original tile was supposed to look like. And but we only used one instance of it right here. We only used one eight by eight tile to make it, so we just saved space instead of taking four. And that's just a little trick. A lot of times you can't do that because your tiles aren't going to be symmetrical and you have to draw them out like they are. But if you plan ahead and know what you're drawing and you know it's going to be symmetrical, easy save for space. So you save that to the ROM, close this. All right, there we go. And then now you have this block that you can put around, and then just sort of. Uh, it's already solid block, so just save your room or whatever, and then load it. And there you go. There's our new blocks. Not that pretty, but they're simple. They work. And now you can just spend as much time as you want changing and making them look how you want to look. And the great thing about them also is you, with the graphics editor you can change half the color of the block to a different palette. They don't have to all be in the same palette. In other words, go back to our block. Here and say we want the top half to be the 4 and then we want this one to be this color. Now instead of using palette 4 which is right here we're using palette 5 which is why this looks completely different and so now you can save it and you'll have half a different color block. So you can really change the palettes. The whole thing doesn't have to be in the same palette in case you want to use more colors. If uh, you have this as like a complex kind of shape even though for the amount of colors that you have up here and for the amount of space in the 8x8 block you really don't need to but you could change the palette so you can have a whole complex array of colors. Now the other thing I wanted to touch on before I stop this is your special GFX down here. These are pretty much what they are as you see. Um, Tile 2 or Title 2 is your Super Metroid logo and the Nintendo logo in the beginning. Tile 1, or Title 1, is the background, I believe, of the piece of the, like, we're behind Super Metroid. And the other ones you can kind of just figure out just by going into them. Now, the thing is, though, that a lot of them, like, remember, if we take Tile 2, go to Rip, so we'll put it out there, T-O-P, blah, 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 okay, go back to our Tile Layer Pro and load it it comes up like this now some of them aren't in this view SNES 
format. You put it into the SNES format and it won't work. It'll still look like a mess. And a lot of them are in, uh, I don't know, I think, what was it, 8 B or something like that. You have to look back at the graphics center. One of them says, I think. But otherwise, some of the those particular ones can't be edited in Talia Pro. You have to find another program. I personally haven't done it. But uh, if you really want to edit that, you can. And the thing is also, if you planned on editing, say, the title right here, uh, finding a palette could seem tricky. That would look right. But all you have to do is go into your beauty salon, click over, and then here's your title stuff. I think it's this one right here. You just click that. Save to palette file. Save it as the same as uh, palette load. Save as yeah, that looks right. Now, obviously, the Nintendo thing uses a different one, but now you can use your tile arranger as I went over before to map the whole thing out so you can see it all as one piece, and then sort of just go through it and put whatever you want on it. Same thing with the Nintendo logo. So that's pretty much that. Next time, I'll probably. In my next tutorial for Talia Pro, go over enemies and how you can change them around and such. But otherwise, I think that's pretty good for now. Thanks for watching.